Hi, I'm Mark Bickley, and with just five games left in the home and away season, welcome to The Crows Show, brought to you by Hungry Jack's Biscoff. Obviously, some nervous weeks ahead for the next crop of potential draft picks. And Chase Jones, as a first rounder, knows what it's like to carry the weight of expectations. Later in the show, he tells Ebony Marinoff how he deals with the ongoing pressure. But first, as the Crows midfield undergoes generational change, Sam Berry has emerged as a much improved player who's come to terms with the demands of elite football. Sam's tackling strength has always been recognised, but he's become a more explosive player with greater physical presence. And one memorable moment earlier this year helped him secure a regular place in the senior team. He's had a good game, Berry. Pops it home. Two in a row for the Adelaide Crows. Kind of felt like a long time coming. Probably played, I mean, earlier this year I played a lot of, a lot of the sub role and um, a lot of Sam for last year. So to finally get some consistency, uh, AFL footy is, is everything I've been wanting and I'm loving it. I think I tried to embrace the, the short period on the time. It was probably good in a way for um, developing my game in the change in speed um, and, and working on a few things in, in a short period. Um, but is is obviously very challenging um, sitting through a game and um, you can be called upon whenever so that's always tough and especially the night games um, getting on at 9.30 at night it's, uh, it's pretty late so um, yeah just trying to stay involved and, and trying to stay ready. Barry. He's got it! The sub becomes the hero! Let's have a look. Big bird up. Crouch's hands, absolutely elite. Keezy's. Snags. <laughs> Boys uh, got around me, which was, um, yeah, it was pretty special. I probably wasn't really thinking too much, to be honest, until I went through it was, yeah, pretty cool. Watched the Ben Cousins highlight reel, uh, the morning of the game, and I think it just, it just happened. I didn't even mean to do it. I pride myself on the contested um, side of the game, so usually less running involved and, and more contested um, situations, whether it's getting the ball or tackling, so I enjoy that. There's a lot of great people that I've bounced off around the club that have helped me. Um, probably name a couple, Sloney helped me a lot, uh, and VB, midfield coach, has, has helped me a heap as well. Just knowing that there's going to be challenges in pretty much everyone's footy career, so, um, and whether it is form or, or just selection, um, yeah, it, it definitely was tough, but I think I found a lot of things that I wanted to work on and um, I think, yeah, in the future I'll be a better player because of it. And it was great to see the club's inaugural captain, Chris McDermott, at our last home game. The SA great was recently inducted into the Australian Football Hall of Fame. It makes me old, so that one we can tick off, but for me, it's the greatest honour I've been, uh, been given. It was an incredible night. Stay with us. Still to come on The Crow Show, a junior showdown for some of the state's best young players. And a day out with Ned and Nick, footballers turned farmers. Congratulations. 
congratulations, uh, great achievement. Um, good to have so many of your family here tonight. Um, obviously, they've had uh, you know, significant contribution to your journey um, over uh, over the last 18, 19 years. Um, I hear that uh, your dad might have even helped you uh, with a uh, Ninja Warrior course in the backyard, which is pretty cool. So, um, you know, speaking to Mickey Gordon this morning, he said that uh, over the last five or six weeks, you've just played a shutdown role and you just go work and then get the job done. So, uh, I know that um, your teammates love playing with us. So, keep bringing that attitude and I'm sure you'll have a, a long career. And, and most of all, just go out and enjoy yourself tonight. Good luck. Extremely hard, perseverance, um, your dedication, mate, and you never give up. And from even a little kid, you never wanted to get beaten. And I'll tell you all you blokes here now, he'll give you 150%. But uh, what a great bunch of blokes he can be with. Thank you so much. Thank you to the club. And um, what, a, what a journey. Well done, mate. Thank you. Been out there with everyone. And um, some good mates out there. Um, it was so surreal and absolutely loved it. Yeah, one of my favourite moments ever. So lovely to have all my family over and obviously uh, my sister and her boyfriend flew back from Bali, so um, really appreciate that. But yeah, absolutely loved it. Um, and then getting my jersey in the room was such a special moment for me and my family. Absolutely loved that job and trying to take probably the most dangerous small forward and um, trying to take him out of the game. Probably a lot of people wouldn't like it, but I think I'm just such a defensive-minded player and um, like getting in under people's skin, so I obviously love doing that and making someone's day bad and get a smile out of it for me, so yeah. <music> Running out under the banner, probably haven't done that ever, it was a pretty cool moment. Um, and then kind of got the first hands and just thought better give it off quickly and then kind of just ease the nerves from there, so I was, yeah, loved it. We're all well aware that Ned McHenry knows a thing or two about fishing. He even has his own show on Seven. Turns out there's more to Ned than football and fishing. He's a farmer as well. In a joint venture with Nick Murray, he leases several properties to fatten lambs. And he invited us along to check out the business. Obviously being able to get out um, out of Adelaide, she's pretty full on in here. So to be able to get out there, it's only a 45 minute drive uh, to be out in the open air. Obviously check in Strathalbyn and close towns like that and just sort of yeah, live more so of a normal country life. It's probably what I enjoy about it. Yeah, I grew up on a bit of land, so I suppose replicating that, that kind of lifestyle and that experience here, um, moving to South Australia has been awesome. And then obviously getting close with Mars and him having kind of similar views with that. Um, it's good to do it together and run some sheep. So it started obviously just at kind of 100 or 200 head, didn't it? Or mm. even maybe 60, I think the first year. Um, and then as we sometimes do, we get a little bit excited or carried mm. away and kind of keep trying to grow things and keep trying to build it. So we're at a good number now. It's at a point that we can manage it, obviously with all the commitments with footy and stuff, but um, we'll see how we go. We probably won't be doing 3,000 or anything anytime soon, but nah. well, we might, <laughs> who knows. <laughs> That's it, just grab one of them. And then if you pop that through there, that'll hold that there. See that? Clever, mate. Good boy. Well done. Good stuff, Nickster. It kills me to say <laughs> it, but I'm happy to put my hand up on these kind of things and say Nick probably <laughs> is a better farmer. I do. I've got some strengths, though, don't Yeah, I? brings the energy. Um, yeah, no, nah, sort of bounce off each other. It works well. Now, Muzz is pretty good. He's kind of the brains of the operation, and then I provide a bit of, bit of energy and a bit of fun. Here we go. Now we're moving with some flow. Oh, God, no, we're not. Everyone thinks Muzz is a pretty quiet, laid-back guy, but he's, when he's my boss and when he's, you know, marching orders and stuff constantly, it's actually quite scary. So. <laughs> bit unfair, but anyways. <laughs> Fongo! Come here! Fongo! Maybe if you speak to him a little bit more nicely, he might respect you. Yeah! Well, that's working well, mate. He's coming back for sure. Footy's got its highs and lows, right? Like, it's got some of the best times ever when you're winning games and you're playing well. Um, so, you know, getting out to the regions and having different passions and, and projects in place kind of keep you grounded and in a similar kind of vein. When things aren't going as well, you've got other passions and stuff to pursue. So, um, yeah, I find it works really well for me, as long as, obviously, my attention's in, in footy first and foremost. Having other things is, is really beneficial. Chops, Chops was a good story. We, um, we were out at the farm, our property in Hartley, one day, and we were just checking the ewes because there was a few lambs kind of running around. And, um, yeah, there was this one kind of one day old, maybe half a day old, Old kind of lamb by himself or by herself. Chops is actually a girl, but mm. he somehow just kind of <laughs> became a boy. Chops was, was by itself, and, and we kind of made the 
Oh, the very unthought out decision to actually take it home and hand rear it for a bit of fun. So it ended up working out quite well. He's, he's grown out to like a, a really healthy lamb, but our neighbours in suburban Unley, when we've got 500 square metres, probably didn't enjoy it as much as we did. So we're feeding him three times a day and trying to make it work with everything. Um, yeah, it was pretty funny. He was going up to cafes and stuff on King William Road and going out for lunch and stuff. But um, yeah, to have him back on the farm now, I think it's a great result. There's no more buying, thank God. Mm. Our neighbours are happy. Hey guys, Riley O'Brien here. This year we're running a trick shot competition, so we'd love you to send in all your trick shots at home, at a footy oval, down the park. Show us what you got. To give you guys some inspiration, I'll get as tricky as I can get and I'll handball over my head into the tray. Make sure you send in all your trick shots. Details are on the screen now. And here's some of our latest entries. This month's winner will be notified shortly. Let me run some names past you. Michelani and Borlace from the Crows, Aaliyah from the Giants, and the Saints, Wanganeen Miller. All stars of tomorrow and all products of the Crows Next Generation Academy. And the current crop of youngsters includes some promising father-son prospects, including Tyler Welsh and Harry Thompson. This week, the squad took on players from Port Adelaide's Academy with one or two talent scouts no doubt looking on. I think it's a great introduction into AFL footy or even like professional sport in general. We talked a lot about like, like being a pro at school, um, in the workforce, at home, uh, nutrition, recovery, sleep, just building those good habits. And realistically, not, not everyone in the programs can play AFL, but if they learn things that then they can go into their life, then the program's been a success. I reckon the best part for the presentations and learning about how to like get drafted nutrition and how to recover properly. Oh uh, yeah, it was really good getting to learn new things, how to recover and all that before games and nutrition, what to eat and drink and that. Obviously going in, um, it was a bit of a talent identification process for us. with a focus on NGA, uh, father, son, uh, multicultural sort of uh, focus, um, but it quickly like turned into some really top end talent in our in our program, and I'm sure Port Adelaide had the had the same. But yeah, it was a good learning experience for me, and, and I think the kids as well, and as a club as a whole going forward. Yeah, it was very good. Got, we were down but got up in the end, which is always good, beating poor. When I'm older, I hope I can come back here and continue playing. You know, like Dad, take the same footsteps as what he did. And thanks to Bendigo Bank, let's check out some school holidays footy. Last week, the Sandfall held its under-15 intrastate carnival. Eight Sandfall clubs fielded Metro and country teams featuring SA's most promising young footballers. The carnival plays a major role in the Sandfall's junior development plan. Yeah, I guess playing at Ingle Farm, we weren't the strongest side, so we didn't really win too many games. But when we did get that first win, it was just... Awesome. We were over the moon. Half of us didn't know the song, so it was quite funny. But yeah, it was a great moment for us. You know, we were scrounging numbers together to just get enough girls on the field and then able to get a win, which was just awesome. Well, I was pretty lucky. We were pretty good. Um, under 12, we won the prelim, made it to the grand final. Uh, unfortunately, didn't win that, but the prelim was a, a big highlight. Uh, it's actually probably the only time I've played finals. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully, a few finals to come. Interesting question, I guess. Um, when I first started playing footy, I was focused on basketball. That was my number one sport. I'd only play footy when it didn't clash with the basketball. So I guess I probably wasn't as passionate about footy when I first started as I am now. It's my whole life pretty much now. So 
Um, it definitely has changed and I've grown to just love it more and more every day and I just want to, you know, now be a role model to these younger girls coming through and to, yeah, my younger teammates in my team. I probably change as well, probably enjoy it more. Uh, I loved it as a kid, it was a whole of my weekend. Um, but now, you know, I'm just very grateful for the opportunity I've got and getting to train every day with the boys and running out on the weekend's pretty cool. So yeah, if, if anything, I'm more, more grateful and loving it more. Yeah, it can be tough sometimes with ups and downs and everything that happens in life, but I guess so grateful that I have this opportunity to be able to play sport um, as a job. So that is pretty much what motivates me because I know one day that will just be gone and um, I'm a, I don't ever want to look back and be like, I wish I could have done this, that. So just, yeah, taking the opportunity um, and doing the best I can to stay in it as long as possible. Yeah, I'll be the same. Don't have any regrets when I finish. Um, a bit different from you, I haven't played finals yet, so I'd love to win a flag or do a bit of that. Um, but yeah, probably playing finals and um, yeah, having no regrets at the end of my career. Get access to free resources and education. To help your local club tackle the growing presence of betting and sport. Together, we can create a safer environment for players and fans alike. Sign up now to make a positive impact in your community. So Chase, Nicola, your partner, is pregnant and you're going to become a dad. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's very exciting um, setting up all the nursery and stuff. Yeah, it's very massive news and can't wait. You were a top 10 draft pick. Can you talk us through the pressures of all that that comes with? Yeah, definitely. SA love their footy, so it's always going to happen. There's pressure in, in footy in general in the AFL system, so just being able to not worry about it too much and just play your own game, I guess, is the biggest part I would um, give on to the young guys coming through. And you talk about, I guess, South Australia being a big footy state. You're yourself from Tasmania. How excited are you that Tasmania get an AFL team? Yeah, it's great. Um, as, as you said, Tassie's a massive footy state, so it's going to be very exciting for the state itself. And um, yeah, I know a lot of people down there that are just going to love it and just um, go to the footy every weekend like they do here. With that, is it a really, I guess, AFL footy state, but they've just been like, crying out for an AFL team? Yeah, most definitely. They've, oh, I think since I was 10 years old, they've, well, younger, they've been talking about a team in Tassie for years. So to actually see it happening is pretty exciting for the state itself. Obviously, it's been a really challenging last few weeks. How do you guys all keep up and about to continue and finish the season off strongly? Oh, we've got a young group and I think the energy comes from that. Like young guys like Billy Dowling playing his first couple of games, Mars coming back, like there's excitement in everything that every game they're going to and we we know we haven't performed to the level that we want to and we know that um, the back end of the year is something that we can use for years to come with those young guys and just getting some games together like it's gonna be an exciting couple of years. What are your strengths that you bring to the team? Yeah, I, I think that uh, running capacity and the outside um, run is what I definitely bring and um, just that defensive side of things as well. Working back to help with the defenders, like it's always part of my role. So yeah, no, nah, I just do whatever I can to bring to the team. So yeah, it's good fun. Awesome, thanks for joining me today. No worries, Nuffy. Thank you. We'll break down the Hawthorne game next week, but let's use this chance to take a look at some of the improvement this young Crows side is making. Watch Lockie Scholl and Josh Rochelle. Both are equal with the ball when it's turned over and both outwork their opponents to get into a scoring position. Scholl ended up with the goal at a critically important time of the game. Sam Berry is another player whose game continues to evolve. With more exposure in the midfield this season, his increased strength and power gives him the tools to compete with the game's best. This is also translated to more explosive running, a characteristic that is highly valued in today's game. And we've also had a glimpse at what Riley Tilthorpe could mean to the Crows forward line. Clearly bigger and stronger and able to use that to fend off and also in marking contests. His presence gives Adelaide someone who can compete under the long high entries, either marking it himself 
or bringing it to ground for the small forwards. It will also be interesting to see how he and Darcy Fogarty combine for the rest of the season. All three examples we've highlighted today prove that Adelaide has a bright future. Whenever you take a photo of yourself or a friend at any of our games and post it to social media, make sure you use the hashtag WeFlyersOne. Let's settle on you. Please email faceinthecrowd at afc.com.au with photo ID to claim your prize of two tickets to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill at Adelaide Oval. That just about wraps up today's show. Thanks for your company and I look forward to joining you again next Sunday at 2 o'clock on 7. Stand by now for the Sandfalls Game of the Day. The Crows Show, brought to you by Hungry Jack's JFC Palmy.